Exciting times in Austin as the 2024 season will be the first time that the Longhorns battle it out with the SEC Giants as the conferences slowly start to consolidate. Welcome to the uh, Voice of College Football channel. I am a Voice of College Football. My name is Sonny Verma, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Texas Longhorns and who better to talk about the Longhorns than uh, who I consider the best outlet for Longhorns information, and that's uh, on Texas football. So I'm bringing on Bobby Burton now. Bobby, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it, Sonny. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, Bobby, uh, you, before we start, why don't you just go ahead and let the folks know where they can find you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we we run a YouTube channel and website. Uh, also, you can find us on Spotify, Apple. Uh, it's called On Texas Football. It's something that we started about a year and a half ago and has really taken off. And uh, we really enjoy talking with Texas fans and uh, visiting with him, as well as delivering news uh, and information and talking everything from the team to recruiting uh, to other sports as well. Yeah, and I can say as someone who's new into covering the Texas Longhorns, uh, you know, my journey started maybe a month and a half ago. Uh, on Texas football is as top notch uh, quality as you're going to find when it comes to uh, Longhorns information. Uh, they've got shows throughout the day. I actually start my mornings watching coffee and football uh, in the chat section, which is you know, uh, always a busy time. Uh, you know, there's a lot, there's a very close knit community that they're building over there. So I was uh, very excited that uh, I was able to book Bobby as my first uh, guest um, talking about Texas. So again, you know, not to flatter you, Bobby, but thank you for coming on. I, I'm happy to be here and I just say hook them. Hook them <laughs> to you and your new venture. Good luck to you. Appreciate you. Um, you know, let's just start kind of high level. Obviously, you know, uh, Texas Longhorns, like, it's been a couple of years uh, that we've known that the transition to the SEC was going to happen. And now, finally, it is. Um, you've been covering the Longhorns for a little while, obviously. But this particular spring, like, are the vibes a little bit different? Like, you know, now you know that your schedule is going to change significantly. You're going to be playing other powerhouses uh, in the SEC. Is there a different feel in the training camps or anything like that? Yes. Uh, I think it's a good point. Uh, and but, but I don't actually think it's necessarily all predicated on the SEC. And, and what I mean by that is Texas just came off its first college football playoff uh, situation since really 2009, 2010, uh, when Texas lost to Col uh, Texas and Colt McCoy lost to Alabama in the national championship game. So it's not just the introduction to the SEC that has Longhorn fans excited. It's the entire direction of the program under Steve Sarkeesian. Um, in three years, he's turned a mm, relatively OK team into a national contender. And you know what? It, the, the other aspect that Texas fans will point to, Sonny, is not only does he have them poised to be a national contend contender, Texas has been, you know, quote unquote, back before and then it fell through. Now, you know, Texas fans, pretty astute football audience in general mm -hmm. and they understand the difference between one hit wonders and something that's built for success. And all the markers are there right now for Texas to be more than just a one and done type of situation. Now, is that going to come to pass? We're all waiting for that to happen. Uh, but with Quinn Ewers back for a third year starting with Arch Manning waiting in the wings with a plethora of other highly, highly I mean, look, we think they have 30 plus, NFL players on their roster right now. Um, it's it's a different feeling in and around Austin, in and around the Longhorns program. And that coincides with, to your point, this move to the SEC. And the SEC uh, is the 800-pound gorilla. Uh, you know that as well as anybody. They, they've, for better or worse, ruled college football for the last 15 years or so, ever since Nick Saban went to Alabama, really. Um, and I, I feel like uh, Texas fans have some anticipation towards that, but really it's coupled with feeling uh, overwhelmingly positive about the trajectory of the program in general. So I, I hear you about the SEC, and I, I agree with you, but it's not just that that has Texas fans kind of excited. Sure, no, that makes sense. You know, we you kind of referenced Coach Sark a couple times. Uh, what is he doing um, you know, how do I say this kindly, a little differently from some of his uh, more recent predecessors that, 
you know, have you guys, you know, again, you guys went to the college football playoff last year. Uh, what's, has he implemented? Is there a culture change? Like what, what's going on with the Longhorns today that's been different from the past decade or so? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. First of all, Mac Brown during the end of his tenure uh, just was not a great, was not the recruiter he once was and hadn't really selected the right players, particularly at quarterback. He had a real issue there. Then Charlie Strong came in and lost at three consecutive losing seasons at Texas, uh, followed by uh, uh, a situation where Tom Herman did okay here and there, won a Sugar Bowl against Georgia, but then the next year was mediocre, followed by just an okay year. Um, and he never really ingratiated himself to the Texas fan base. Steve Sarkeesian has gone about it quite differently. Um, he seems to be have a little bit more of a killer instinct uh, than Tom Herman when it comes to recruiting, first of all. So Tom Herman recruited some good players and had good recruiting classes. But Tom Herman, if if somebody told him no, he'd go on to the next guy. If somebody told Mac Brown no, he'd go on to the next guy. Steve Sarkeesian has taken the the stance that wait a minute, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait on these guys. And so whether it's getting back a Quinn Ewers from Ohio State or um, going after Anthony Hill and, and the star linebacker and flipping him uh, from uh, A&M late in the process. He's, to me, Sark has a little bit more of a killer mentality uh, than those other guys. And I also think that that's rubbed off on the team a little bit. Um, they know that, you know, it's put up or shut up a little bit. And this past season proved that. You mentioned culture as well, Sonny, and I think that's part of it. Um, he's definitely redefined what culture means at Texas. And to him, culture is about winning every day um, as opposed to just winning on Saturdays. And so he's talking about effort and practice and all these different things. But I really think the thing that connects him and has is, is, is been different, he's the same person every day to these guys. So when he tells them, you know what, uh, it's – it, it, you're not doing well enough right now in their off-season meetings. And I've heard some of these uh, from 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 uh, players and their parents. He, he, he'll come out and tell you, you're not doing well enough. Or you're doing great, just do more of the same. It, it's not – he's even. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean he doesn't have fits of whatever. I mean, every coach is going to get mad at times. But my point being, the players have come to realize who they're dealing with on a consistent basis – and on a consistent basis, he's asking of himself in recruiting, in the transfer portal, et cetera. Like last year, I'll give you an example. He didn't take a he, – he took a three-day vacation the entire year. Okay? Yeah. That, that's, that's something that most college coaches don't do. They, they need to go and decompress, right? But he felt like he had such a chance last offseason to make this team as good as it could be. He only took a three-day vacation all summer. That's unheard of. And so my point being, he's asking a lot of the players in, in holding them accountable. But I think he's also asking a lot of himself. Uh, and, and I mentioned when it comes to recruiting, because that is such a tough, tough thing. You know, you're selling yourself constantly and you're going to be told no. And uh, but he's shown some resilience and some fortitude there that I think is different than his predecessors, frankly. And, uh, you know, Charlie Strong was a really good recruiter, but didn't necessarily have it on the field. Mm -hmm. I think I think Sark may have both and, and be that rare guy that that Texas fans uh, appreciate in more ways than one and, and can build a national power at Texas. Well, I mean, uh, you talk about Sark's resilience and his you know tenacity on the recruiting trail, and that's kind of been the result of that is arguably, and I don't know who's going to argue this, but the best QB room in the country. Uh, obviously, you have Quinn Ewers, uh, who's going to be uh, starting for his third season, and then you have Arch Manning, which uh, you know is a, a, already a household name at this point. Uh, let's talk about Quinn first. Um, what kind of steps does he need to make now in his third year as starter to, you know, not only you know help lead Texas to the next level, but also for him like selfishly to you know kind of develop for the next level. Yeah, and no, I think it's a great question and one that's fair. Right now, he's the the leading guy for the Heisman, uh, for the odds in Vegas, right? Along with Car uh, Carson Beck or Harrison Beck, uh, the, the quarterback, uh, uh, Car Carson Beck, uh, quarterback out of uh, Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. 
Okay. And so he's major expectations on, him, no doubt. Right. Um, there were some things that he, he even said he needed to do in the off season. Some things we've already seen that he's addressed. I mean, he is getting in better and better physical shape each and every year. Uh, I talked a little bit to Quinn uh, this spring uh, during a media availability, and he felt like the difference is, is now he feels comfortable. You know, he's getting to understand what it's like. For the first time in five years, he's at a place where he's been there three years. I mean, he moved from South Lake Carroll and, and forewent his uh, senior year of high school and went directly to Ohio State. Well, he had a year at Ohio State. Then he had a new offense to come learn at Texas. And then he was thrust right onto the field because of the quarterback situation at Texas. Well, finally, he's getting his sea legs, if, if, for lack of a better term. He's always, Sonny, uh, been supremely talented mm -hmm. in the process. Now he's starting to get his sea legs. I think we're going to see a more composed uh, Quinn Ewers. I think we'll see a guy that throws the deep ball better than he ever has. I mean, he's, he was throwing the ball really, really nicely this spring. Uh, they've got the spring game coming up April 20th as well. I, I feel like uh, what I would say is the things that he needs to work on are continued improving his footwork, getting the ball out quickly, deep ball, and then red zone efficiency. Uh, Texas was poor in the red zone, relatively speaking, a year ago. I think that they're going to ask more of him in the red zone to, to fit the ball into tighter windows. Mm -hmm. I think that Sark was reticent to do that in his previous two years because he didn't feel like he needed to. Uh, now I think he's going to put a little bit more on his quarterback shoulders in the red zone. And uh, if that happens, Texas has, in my opinion, one of the best offenses in the country. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I absolutely believe you. Let's talk about you know the guy who is uh, right behind Quinn. But, uh, you know, a name, again, that's uh, very popular in the college football world. Arch Manning, you know, he had, if you think about it, any every opportunity in the world to leave and to start his own uh, ascension as a college football player, as a quarterback for probably any team in the country. But he chose to stay. And now, you know, you saw the publicity and everything uh, when Quinn Ewers came back. And he was a very highly touted recruit himself. Now, it's probably reached another level with Arch Manning. Uh, let me ask you, as someone who's, you know, kind of boots on the ground on campus, like how is like what's the feedback on his progression as a quarterback, as a young quarterback? Um, you know, obviously, he's got a lot of potential uh, to kind of live up to. But is the staff itself pretty happy with his progression so far? Oh, they love him. I mean, they, <laughs> you know, there's not much not to love. Uh, I think that um, and we'll see more of him in the spring game than Texas fans have seen of him to date. Right. They really haven't seen enough of Arch Manning to this point. Um, but, you know, I think that it, it makes me kind of chuckle because people talk about him transferring. There was never any thought of him transferring. Um, and the reason why is because he chose Steve Sarkeesian over everybody else two years ago. And the Manning family, unlike some, and, I'm, and I, I don't fault these people who, who maybe think this way necessarily, but the Manning family's playing the long game. Right. They're not worried whether or not they're they're the scion of the Manning family is going to end up in the NFL. They know he's going to end up in the NFL. It's how long does he play and how successful is he? And is he prepared to get there? And he chose Texas for that reason and for education. And so him going somewhere else, it wasn't going to happen. I mean, Sarkeesian has as good, if not better, um, uh, legacy. Uh, with NFL quarterbacks in college than anybody out there. And so uh, that just wasn't going to happen. As far as himself, uh, he is behind Quinn Ewers right now. He has more athleticism than Quinn Ewers. Mm -hmm. He may even be quicker on some things underneath than Quinn Ewers. At the same time, Quinn is more accurate, uh, more familiar with the offense, and has a ton more experience. But I'm telling you, when you say, is does Texas have the best quarterback in the country in the room, Yes, I, because I think it's the only quarterback country in the room that have possible two one-one picks. And what I mean by that is yeah. day one, first round, first pick. Yep. Okay. So I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen because there are certainly other good quarterbacks out there as well. But those two guys have that ability. Mm -hmm. And, you know, good luck finding another team that has them. Maybe somebody does. And I, I'm not familiar, but. Uh, the quarterback room at Texas is in tremendous hands. 
Arch Manning is a part of that. Quinn Ewers is leading it. Uh, they've got a young guy coming up, uh, Trey Owens. It's a good player as well. So they're gonna they're gonna be fine at quarterback as long as Steve Sarkeesian's in Austin. In my opinion. Uh, let's talk about the guys that uh, these quarterbacks are going to be throwing to. And uh, anyone who's paid any attention to the offseason uh, knows that Steve Sarkeesian uh, constantly brings up the name Ryan Wingo, and he seems to be very impressed. Uh, by the young wide receiver. Uh, tell me a little bit about him. Like, What should the expectations be of Ryan uh, coming into this year? Yeah, Ryan's a true freshman out of uh, St. Louis University High School in, in Missouri there. Uh, he is um, also a, a track guy, 10-500 uh, meter, but he's 6'2", 200 pounds. Um, and so he's a little bit freaky, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I've compared him, and I believe he's the best wide receiver recruit Texas has signed since Roy Williams, going back into the early 2000s. Um, more talented, like Xavier Worthy is really talented, right? Very fast. Sure. But Xavier's thin and, and shorter. And all, Ryan Wingo is the prototypical NFL receiver that would go draft highly, top yeah. 10 picks. Um, that being said, he's proven nothing yet. He's just sure. looked good in a camp. Uh, but I really believe that he's just going to be a piece of the puzzle this year, even though I think he can be uh, tremendous when he does play. Uh, you've got guys like Isaiah Bond, the transfer from Alabama, uh, Matthew Golden, transfer from Houston, Jonte Cook is on campus, DeAndre Moore is making plays. Uh, I really think the tight end group, Gunnar Helm and uh, the transfer from Alabama, Amari Nyblack, there's going to be a lot of guys that make hay in the receiving game. And I, and I would not – uh, preclude the running backs from that. Uh, Sark loves to dump it down to the running backs. And Jaden Blue, frankly, uh, was as uh, deadly in the passing game last year as any of the receivers at times. So they, the Longhorns, they have a, a, a plethora of weapons uh, at receiver, at tight end, uh, at running back, and certainly at quarterback. They, they are a team fit to, to compete at a high level on the offensive, offensive side of the ball. So is there any concern whatsoever? I know the talent level's there, but you also lost a lot of guys from last year's team. Uh, do you expect any sort of uh, fall off in any aspect, or you think it's just a machine at this point uh, that uh, Sark's got going on? I, I think that there is a fall off. I mean, you're losing two potential first round wide receivers. Um, exactly. And I don't know that any of those guys, I don't know that Isaiah Bond's a definite first round receiver. Um, I don't know that any of them are as good as Adonai Mitchell, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. At least not right now. So I think there's a chance for a fall off. Uh, you lose JT Sanders, who was uh, one of the best receiver, one of the best tight ends in Texas, uh, statistically in Texas football history. Um, so there's chances of that. Jonathan Brooks will be a number one, maybe the top running back selected in the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is why when we started this conversation, Sonny, I told you Texas fans can kind of smell what's going on here. The guys coming up, they're not devoid of talent themselves. Right. Yeah. Right. And so when I said there's 30, I think there's 30 plus guys on this team right now that will play in the NFL. We just talked about some of those guys. Right. And so it's not, uh, it's, it, they may fall off a little bit. And this is what happened to Tom Herman, right? When Joe Osai and Charles Ominahu and those guys left, Nobody st stood up in, in front of him and said, I'm next. Okay. Steve Sarkeesian's filling the cupboard mm -hmm. such that there are guys there that can raise their hand and step to the front of the line. Uh, let's talk about the running backs room. Uh, I haven't gotten a general consensus on like who the starter is going to be uh, in this upcoming season. If you talk to the fan base, you get feedback from them. You know, half will uh, tell you Jaden Blue, half will tell you CJ Baxter. Um, what are you hearing as of now? I mean, has it been decided yet? Or is this one of those someone's going to have to win that job? I think somebody has to win the job, but I think it's a two-headed monster at the very mm -hmm. least. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to take C.J. Baxter out of inside zone runs. Yeah, I mean, he's too powerful, too big. He's, he's improved this offseason. I've been told multiple times he's running harder, more decisively, um, and he's bouncing off of people a little bit, whereas Jaden Blue doesn't bounce off – Many people. He, he's he's getting stronger, but he's still not that guy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and Sark likes the inside zone too much to just completely go away with it. Uh, so I think I think it's going to be a two headed monster at the very least. Uh, Jaden Blue is as good out of the backfield 
as you will see in college football as a receiver. Um, and he can make people pay outside too. Uh, both guys have home run speed now. Uh, Blue has a little bit more of it, but Cedric Baxter uh, has some speed. Then you have guys like Trey Wisner, who frankly is is kind of, you know, Texas had this guy last year, Sonny, I'm not sure how familiar, named Keelan Robinson. Okay. Tremendous kind of bo- what I call a boutique running back. And what I mean by that is somebody that third down, special plays in the flat, you know, two pa- two running back packages, put him in there and kind of use him as a decoy. He, he, he may even play in the NFL because he's so good at that that role. And there's places for that those kind of people on the NFL teams. Trey Weiser may fit that role this year and may actually be a better runner than Keelan Robinson. Um, and so I, I just I feel like the running back room stack. They've got two young freshmen that are talented. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but they I don't necessarily think that they're they care who running back one is. Sure. They think they have two at least. And they're they're grooming the others to be guys in case somebody gets hurt. Because look, Jonathan Brooks got hurt last year. Uh Two years ago, B. John Robinson went out. Uh Uh, Roshan Johnson was out for a little while. And other guys had to step up. Texas's running back room is is in that scenario right now and and playing that out. Um, We talked a little bit about Ryan Wingo earlier. And obviously on the defensive side, uh, you know, you have Colin Simmons, who a lot of uh, folks are very excited about. uh, But those were the easy answers for this question I'm going to ask you. So we're going to cross those guys off. Uh, besides those two, who's another guy on the Texas Longhorns, like a freshman, whether it's a true freshman or a redshirt freshman, that you think um, is going to be a name that everybody knows, let's just say a couple of games into the season, halfway through the season, uh, you use your own timeline? Yeah. Um, well, true freshman, uh, I would say right now Alex January has kind of moved into that role um, uh, almost out of necessity, Sonny. Uh, we'll see what the portal brings at defensive tackle for the Longhorns. Sure. Uh, but w- right now, I would bet that Al- if if things stay the same, I would bet Alex January gets 10 to 20 snaps a game okay. as a true freshman. But I don't necessarily think things are going to stay the same. And I do think that all of these defensive linemen need time to, to put some – some of the right weight on it. it uh, Rod Babers, a uh, guy that works with me at On Texas Football, mm-hmm. it's, it, it's like adding armor over time. A true freshman comes in, and he may be a freak of nature. Ryan Wingo, Colin Simmons, uh, Alex January, they may be freaks of nature. They need, they still need to add armor over time so they don't get hit by injuries, so they don't get caught off guard by – I mean, they just um, – and so I worry about that. But, but not including freshmen – uh, the guy that's been somewhat of a revelation based on what I've been told in spring ball has been Trey Moore, the transfer from UTSA, who will be a first year player at Texas. He had 14 and a half sacks last year. Mm-hmm. Sunday. Uh, and I'm I am told that Texas right now is getting after the quarterback as well or better than they have since Sark's been there. Uh, and Pete Kwiatkowski has been the defense coordinator. So they've, they've been doing really, really well in that regard. I, I, I would put Trey Moore as the, uh, I would put Alex January as a freshman. Sure. I would put Trey Moore kind of as that guy on defense overall. You did uh, kind of talk about the transfer report a little bit and what Texas is going to be looking for. Uh, I mean, it's going to be opening up very shortly. And, you know, uh, from what I've heard, there's going to be you know significant movement all around college football, especially with a lot of new head coaches uh, heading new programs uh, who weren't maybe able to take advantage fully uh, in that first portal window. Um, what is it exactly that, te- that Texas is going to be focusing on, especially with the expectations this upcoming season is to win a national championship? So what kind of weaknesses do you think they're going to be trying to shore, to shore up? So first of all, I don't know that the expectation is to win a national championship. I think the hope is to win a national sure. championship. The, the expectation might be 10 wins and being in the college football playoff. Fair enough. I think that's that that needs that's where Texas fans want it to be. I think that's where Steve Sarkeesian wants it to be. Uh-huh. Uh, and knowing that, you know, putting together a national championship season is very rare, sure. uh, period. Um, in the portal, Texas itself needs to uh, – they're going to attack the portal from a defensive tackle standpoint. Uh, how well they'll do it, uh, we don't know. Who all will be going in the portal, we don't know. Sure. Uh, but they definitely want two, if possible, definitely one. 
Uh, and then the other position I think that they would look at is punter. Uh, right now they lost uh, Ryan Sanborn to the NFL. Uh, he was a Stanford transfer a year ago. They only have a true freshman coming in who's not even on campus yet and a walk-on. Now, the walk-on's been actually pretty good in practice to this point. But point being, Sonny, uh, they, Steve Sarkeesian is – here we are in year four. He doesn't leave a lot of things to chance. Yeah. Like if there's a way for him to improve the team, he's going to do that. And that goes back to what I talked about earlier. Um, kids know what to expect. Players know what to expect. If you're not good enough, then we're going to find somebody that is, and we're going to keep trying to build this thing to where everybody has to take a step up. So I, I feel like that's kind of where they're going in the portal. They're going to lose some guys to the portal as well. Sure, um, That's going to have to happen. But, uh, look, Texas has been a net winner from the portal from the start of its opening, and I don't expect that to, to change this offseason. One to once again, thanks, Thank Bobby for coming on. Uh, Bobby, I'm going to wrap it up with two easier questions, and maybe not easier, uh, but more fun uh, type of questions for you. So you got to keep one, you got to dump one, and you got to uh, eliminate one. Based on purely on talent, rank Arch Manning, Quinn Ewers, Vince Young, purely on talent. Well, I'm not doing that now. I mean, I, <laughs> um. Purely based on talent, Vince Young's more talented than, you know, he's got more talent in his pinky than most people have in the NFL mm -hmm. right, in, across their entire bodies. I mean, he's – now he didn't have the prettiest throwing motion, but, my God, he was talented. And, you know, uh, I saw him, I think, score 30 points in a basketball game when he's a freshman. And I, I just, he's, he's otherworldly and from a talent perspective. From a who throws the prettiest ball perspective, Quinn Ewers throws the prettiest ball. Uh -huh. Um of that group, Arch Manning has the strongest arm. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I don't, I don't do the kiss, Mary kill. My, my teenagers <laughs> make me do that um, uh, all the time, or try to get me to do it, and I don't do it. But uh, all three of those guys are NFL players. One of them led Texas a national championship. The other two, I think, are going to try. Okay, all good. Final question. Uh, I'm going to start this sentence, and you, you finish it for me. Uh, in 2024. The Texas Longhorns will win the national championship if uh, they get two of the right defensive tackles in the portal. I, I, I do think um, and coalesce as a team. I, I think that those two things, uh, I think I almost am assured that they will uh, get two defensive tackles in the portal, maybe definitely one. Um, but it, to be a champion, it's not just, you know, everybody adds together and then the talent equals the sum of the parts championship teams, uh, they are different. The talent is just one piece of what makes them champions. Um, are they going to stop a Kansas state on fourth down four four tries inside the five yard line? Sure. Right. Are, to even get to the national champ, and I'm, I know they don't play Kansas State this year. My point is, yeah. that's what makes champions. It's not, it's not any one thing. It's uh, it's whether or not a team coalesces to become. Is the offense going to pick up the defense when the defense is down? Is the defense going to pick up the offense when the offense has a, a, an off night? Those kind of things you just you never know, and that's one of the things that I, I one of the reasons why I think football is the best game there is. I'm not going to argue that. Bobby, thank you so much again for uh, joining me today. Uh, if you don't mind, one more time, let the folks know where they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. Join us at ontexasfootball.com. Uh, come to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have more than 40,000 subscribers now. That all Longhorns fans are welcome. We chat, uh, talk with you guys, take questions, et cetera. Uh, talk a little recruiting at times, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's on Texas Football YouTube or on texasfootball.com for a website. Uh, also, let them know about the premium service, which I am a day one supporter of uh, as well. Yeah, you could be what we call an OTF OG, uh, right? And so uh, we actually have that for premium subscriptions. Uh, for $39.95, you can get an annual subscription. If you use a coupon code, that coupon code is OTF OG, all one word there. Uh, join us, or it's just $5.95 a month. We wanted to do something that was a, a nominal fee as opposed to something that's kind of astronomical to get people in and going and uh, being part of the Longhorn community as, as I feel like 
Texas is finally getting its, in the first time in 15 years, Sonny, Texas is getting its sea legs, just like Quinn Ewers. Uh, and getting back to being the, the dominant program, I think it really can become. I, I can't wait. To, and again, I, I can't say enough about On Texas Football. Please check their channel out. Um, I think they just started this premium service like uh, with this week. And uh, yeah. I, I signed up immediately uh, just because I wanted to support the project that they're working on. And I think they're fantastic at what they do. So thank you again, Bobby, for joining us. Uh, thank you all for watching. Please. Uh, channel grow. And until next time, hook them. Hook them.